Christine, and I like Taylor Swift. <laughs> so I have a mountain of new books to share with you today. And, like, my love for Taylor Swift is just very present right now because she's just come back into my life full of force. And it's been so long since I talked about Taylor Swift on this channel. Like, I already did the Taylor Swift book tag ages ago. But I want to talk about Taylor some more. So I'm going to mash two of my favorite things again. For every book I show you today, I'm going to hit shuffle on my iTunes library and talk briefly about a Taylor Swift song that happens to come up. Because why not? Well, mixing it up. I love Taylor Swift. Today, I'm going to start with an announcement because I have like three announcements. Firstly, I'm going to be at Buffer Fest this year. I'm so excited. It's always sounded so fancy pants to me, Buffer Fest. It's like a YouTube film festival in Toronto, Canada. There are a bunch of different screenings and I'm going to be in the Women in YouTube screening and I'm going to be screening a new video that hasn't come out yet that I made recently that I hope you guys like. <laughs> For those of you who aren't going, it'll be premiered the next week on my channel, but it's gonna be like on a big screen at Buffer Fest. And I don't know, I don't know how comfortable I am like being there while people watch it. I might like crawl under my chair and scrunch up and do a ball until it's over. But I'll be there! Link in the description below. The first book I have to share with you today is, of course, the book explosion September book of the month. It was sent to me as part of a paid promotion with Disney Hyperion. We're working with Disney Hyperion this month. We are reading The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, Alex Bracken's new book, which is a spooky fall read about a boy who discovers he has a demon living inside of him. And I don't know much more than that, because I don't need to, because Alex wrote it. I know it's more middle grade versus her previous books, who which have been more YA. Look how pretty the cover is. Look at it shine. Uh, look at this! Look at this nice inside stuff! Light a candle and step close to the looking glass. Time is short and we cannot delay. Oh! Prosper's great 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 something grandfather made a contract with a demon who exchanges fortune for eternal servitude. Interesting. Book Explosion, which is a monthly book club, if you don't know, with myself, Caddy Tastic, and Jesse the Reader. At the end of the month, we do a live show discussion of the book we all read together with you guys, take questions. It's super fun. I'm going to leave more details about when that is going to be in the description below. <laughs> Treacherous. Treacherous was one of those songs on the album that like I skipped the first million times. Like I listened to it, but I didn't love it the first time. It took me a while, but now I have a better appreciation for Treacherous. I like the part when it's like, na 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 That's really all I had to say about Treacherous. It's kind of low-key obscure on the Taylor Swift song scale. The next book I have to show you today is one I ordered myself on Amazon, and that is Dating You, Hating You by Christine. Christina Lauren, who are an author duo. There's Christina and there's Lauren, and together they are Christina Lauren. This is one of their newer releases, and it takes place in California, and it's about, I think, these two agents who, like, don't like each other, and then they end up liking each other, and, like, they're dating you and hating you. Yeah. Truly a romance for the 21st century. A smart, sexy romance for readers who thrive on girl power. Oh, I like that. Yes. Mine! Mine was the first single on Speak Now, I believe. Don't quote me. Stop. Leave me alone. I loved this song. I thought it was adorable. It made me really think about Taylor Swift's parents and like, what's up with them? What's their story? This is actually the live version that my computer played. I went to the Speak Now tour, of course, but my seats were really shitty for that tour. It was at a stadium, Gillette Stadium, and I was on the third tier and the speaker system was not loud enough so I could not hear T-Swift if I sang because it wasn't loud enough. It was very sad. I'm gonna be at New York Comic Con this year with Kat and Jesse, Natasha, and Sasha. We're we're doing the evolution of booktube panel on Thursday, October 5th at 4 o'clock. Thursday tickets are still available for New York Comic Con if you're interested in coming and you're in New York. There's more information about all that in the description below. On top of that, Kat, Jesse, and I are also having an event that is happening on Sunday that is not at Comic Con, so anyone can come. It's at the Hudson Mercantile. You still do have to get a ticket, and I'll leave links in the description below, but they're only five bucks. We're having the Hogwarts Book Explosion Extravaganza! I'm so so excited! So you come in your Hogwarts house colors, we're gonna do Q&A, and then we're gonna play games, and there's gonna be house points! I got my Ravenclaw robes dry cleaned the other day. I'm ready for this. I am pumped for this. Link in the description below. I, there should be a link to tickets. It is gonna be at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, so grab yourself a Starbucks, 
before you head over there. I know we are all going to be grabbing ourselves a Starbucks before we get over there. I'm so excited to play Hogwarts House. Next, I am working with Harlequin this month and they sent me All Rights Reserved by Gregory Scott Katsoulis. This book has such a cool concept. Words, all words are copyrighted. Like words and phrases are copyrighted and cost money. When you're 15, you start being charged and it puts people in really intense debt because like saying the word sorry is like a $10 charge and stuff and it's like an official admission of guilt and it's about this one girl who starts a resistance by not speaking at all. She's supposed to make a speech and instead of making the speech she's supposed to make she is silent and that gesture alone has an entire ripple effect on the community. It's just standing up to the government and other people start to follow her lead and it sounds awesome. I'm definitely gonna be reading it this month. Naked. Ooh. Style by Taylor Swift from the 1989 album. 1989, I think, is my least favorite Taylor Swift album. Like, I love it. There's like the most amount of songs that I skip on a Taylor Swift CD on 1989. Style turned into one of those songs. What can I say about style? We all think it's about Harry Styles. Like, I've often debated Taylor's relationship with Harry Styles. Was it real? Was it just for publicity? Like, it had that publicity feel. That's part of what makes Taylor Swift such a fantastic, intriguing business lady slash songwriter. Like, she lets us see who she's dating so that we can speculate on who her songs are about. And like, she knows that if she doesn't give us anyone to work with, like if she doesn't tell us anything, we don't have enough to go on to speculate. The next book I have to show you today is the UK edition of Because You Love to Hate Me. I actually think I might like this cover, but I don't know, I like both of the covers. I like the pink with the black flower. 13 booktubers paired up with 13 authors and each booktuber gave the authors a prompt to write a story and the booktubers also wrote like a little fun villainy thing that comes after each story. So I have a fun villainy thing in here that comes after Renee Adier's story. Breathe! Taylor Swift's Breathe. So this album released my freshman year of college, right after I had binge read the Twilight series multiple times. And I was convinced, listening to this song, I was like, Taylor Swift just finished Twilight. And this is about Edward Cullen. This is about New Moon. I still am kind of convinced that that is the case. I haven't listened to Breathe actually in a while, so I'd have to reanalyze the lyrics. 18 year old Christine analyzing the lyrics, she was like, yeah, yeah. This is about Edward Cullen. It is. It is. Don't question me. Because there's just like certain words that Stephanie would use a lot. Just groupings of thoughts that show up a lot and breathe. I am Sherlock right now. Bella said this phrase about Edward, and then this phrase appeared in Taylor's song. Vis a vis. This is about Edward. <laughs> I'm also gonna be at Y'all Fest this year in Charleston, South Carolina on November 11th. Pat, Jesse, and I are doing our annual Book Explosion Meetup. It's always super fun and Y'all Fest is a free event for book lovers to gather at. So if you're in that area, please come out and join us. Again, more information in the description below. Next, Now I Rise by Kirsten White. Now I Rise is the second book in the And I Darken trilogy, which is so good. If you haven't read And I Darken yet, I have a book talk about it explaining what it's about better. It is the story of Vlad the Impaler, if Vlad the Impaler was a woman. It takes place in the late 1400s. I learned so much, I was so entertained, like the characters are fantastic. I got this at Comic-Con at the Random House Party. They have books on the table that you could just take. And I saw Now I Rise and I'm like, mine, mine, Taylor Swift song time. Haunted. Bum, 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 bum. This is on Speak Now. I love Haunted. Speak Now is like tied up there with Red, my favorite Taylor Swift album. I can't choose. What can I say about Haunted by Taylor Swift? I loved it. I love the. Dun, 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 dun. And I watched True Blood at the time. Like, I always think back to this scene now when I hear Haunted. Jessica from True Blood, she has Taylor Swift's CD. We just see it. We see it in Jessica's stuff. And then later on, when something happens with a relationship in the show with her and Jason, all of a sudden, Haunted comes out. Dun, 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 dun. Best moment. Best use of Taylor Swift's song in show. The next book I have to show you today was our August book of the month, which I didn't have the hard copy last book haul, so here it is. I really, really liked Little Monsters. I just talked about it in my stories I ate this month for August, and there's a full book explosion live show you can watch where we discuss everything that happened. Cause up, monsters. Oh, I'm only me when I'm 
with you. This is from Taylor Swift's first CD. I used to listen to this song all the time on the way to high school in my car. With you. It's so catchy. It's also so like teenager, you know? I've grown with Taylor Swift. Like she was writing those teenager songs when I was a teenager and like every time she goes out with a new album, I feel like I'm on the same journey with her. The next book I have to show you today, I actually have two of them. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. I was fortunate enough to be invited to see the play in Los Angeles and they were like, we're gonna send you a book. Can you do a bookstagram? They wanted the bookstagram to go up on the same day that I went to the play and the book did not come in the mail on time. So I went out and bought The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, did a bookstagram with this one, and then this one came a couple days later. So I have like the play, this is the cover that goes with the play poster. The play was absolutely fantastic and I feel like I read the book by watching the play. It was done so well. It's about a boy with autism and it really emerges you in the way that he sees the world and the way that his brain works. It's eye-opening and heartwarming and touching and I went through all the emotions. I loved it. We were both young when I first saw you. Love Story, another Taylor Swift classic. Love Story was when people started noticing Taylor Swift and people started freaking out like, she is not country, this is clearly pop. It was popular, which meant it was too popular to be considered country music. <laughs> and like all this hate started coming out because she was considered country. I was just like, so what's your point though? Like, do you not like the song? Like you just don't like it because she says she's country and she, you think she's pop? She really blew up in 1989, but she blew up then with Love Story. And I was over here like all hipster when Love Story came out. Like, yeah, I already know her and I already love her. I'm working with Random House this month and they sent me Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I really love the cover of this book. It catches my eye from afar. It's a bunch of blonde hair on the floor and a scissor. Also, it looks like spaghetti. It kind of like, when you look at it, you don't know exactly what it is until you focus in on it. And I really like that. E. Lockhart writes very interesting contemporary stories. You probably know her as the author of We Were Liars. The synopsis for this book is very vague. So excuse me if any of the things I'm assuming are incorrect. So it sounds like it's about a super intense friendship and there's a disappearance or a murder, something happens, disguises blood. It sounds like these girls are on the run. It sounds like they murdered somebody. I don't know. There's this weird haunting feeling you get with E. Lockhart's writing. This sounds like another twisty, turvy road. Twenty two. Also on the Red Album. Also came out when I was 22. And I was like, oh my God, this is so me right now. This is like so the headspace I'm in totally. And it totally was. I'm saying it all the time and it was so fun and then when I turned 23 was like the only thing I could think was I'm not gonna be able to sing Taylor Swift's 22 anymore and feel like this is me. Now I'm 23 and I don't belong in the Taylor Swift song. It sucks. The next book I have to show you today is an arc that I just got in the mail from Penguin and that is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. There's Someone Inside Your House it is a horror book, which is a big change of pace. Uh oh. Well, I Don't Wanna Live Forever by Zayn and Taylor Swift. This was a surprise drop by Taylor during her like three year hiatus period. This drop with Zayn for Fifty Shades Daka. It was really like more of a Zayn song. It's not heavy on the Taylor Swift. I don't have much to say about it, but it exists. The next book I have to show you is another one that Random House sent me and that is A Poison Dark and Drowning by Jessica Kluess, which is the second book in the Shadow Bright and Burning series that I started last year. It was a really interesting take on magic that takes place in a fictional version of Victorian England. I have a book talk for Shadow Bright and Burning, so I'll leave that in the description below. So if you're interested, you can watch it and get like a better description of what the book's about. I remember thinking that I was really excited for the second book because everything's set up now. Since it's a fantasy with a whole magic system, it took some time to get into it. Once you were into it, it was really cool and really interesting. Naked, we've got a classic look going on. I like how the inside is purple. I'm alone on my own. A Place in This World by Taylor Swift. This is another one that I listen to all the time on my drives during senior year of high school. And I would just be like, yes, this is so me. Like, this is me right now. Taylor Swift just gets me. She gets me now, she gets me then, she gets me every then, every all the time. Next, Want 
by Cindy Pond. I've never read Cindy Pond before. I met her last month doing the You Know You Love to Hate Me panels and she's so cool. This is her most recent release. It's called Want. I'm not sure what it's about because when I bought it, I was like, I don't care what it's about. It's gonna be good because Cindy Pond is awesome. Jason survives in a divided society where the elite use their wealth to buy longer lives. The rich wear special suits that protect them from the pollution and viruses that plague the city while those without suffer illness and early deaths. Kind of sounds like a sci-fi dystopian. Fresh, compelling, and timely. <gasps> oh, look how blue it is, Nike. Oh, this is a nice, this is a good looking naked book. So I've been looking at my contemporary shelves lately and like every time I do a video and the selection series comes up, it bothers me that I don't have the selection. I went on Amazon and paid money to get a hardcover copy of the selection. Years later, I felt the need to buy this. Cause it just, my collection looks so incomplete. It's just so awkwardly like the second two books and then the two tag on books after. What? It, it needs this. It needs this spine. Like this spine will go down in my brain history as some of the best spines. This series looks so good together. Oh, the last time. The last time is one of Taylor's collaborative songs on Red. I really, that's another thing I really loved about Red. She put my name at the top of your list. That's just a really nice relationship song. You're not putting me first and you have to because I deserve to be put first on your List. The last book I have to show you today. I can't believe I forgot this was coming out. Like I forgot this was a thing. It makes sense. I forgot it. I mean, yes, it kind of makes. Yes, it makes sense. I forgot it because it's a book about a character that's not my favorite, and that is Tower of Dawn by Sarah J. Mass. To interrupt me one more time when I'm trying to rag on Kale. Tower of Dawn started as a novella about Kale because if you read Empire of Storms. You know that like he kind of falls off the face of the earth. It's like, where the f did Kale go? This is where Kale went. So this book takes place in tandem with the events that we see in Empire of Storms, I believe. So it's gonna be interesting to see what Sarah does with that. At first I was like, oh, a novella about Kale. Like, don't sign me up, not interested. You step over there. But now she's like, it's so important to the story that she should go as far as to call it book six in the Throne of Glass series. So I need to read Tower of Dawn. She'll probably win me over with Tower of Dawn because Sarah always does. She's really good at writing books that I love. I'm gonna read it, <laughs> obviously. It's a 664 page book. This was gonna be a novella. <laughs> I'm excited. I don't like Kill, but I'm excited. Back to December, acoustic version. I go back to December all the time. When I first heard this song, I was like, oh my god, this is about Taylor Lautner and I love it. I think it's like universally accepted that this is about Taylor Lautner. I'm not sure. Because like I wasn't in the Taylor Swift fan community at that time. Taylor, if you're out there, I really want to see you. I'd really like to see you really close at the Reputation Tour. <laughs> this has been my Taylor Swift book haul. There's a lot of events coming up. Let me know if you're gonna be at any of them, if I'm gonna see you at Buffer or Y'all Fest or New York Comic Con or our New York Hogwarts book explosion event. Are you ready for it? Ha! I am going to attempt to sing Look What You Made Me Do whilst holding the books. If I hold them through the whole song, then I win. Here we go. I don't like your little games. <laughs> My name is Christine. Thanks for watching. I make videos every Tuesday. I'm at XTeenMate on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Ooh, look what you made me do. You made me hold two motorcycles with my hands and look weird doing it. <laughs>